Let's understand some important areas of the brain which play a role in language. There is this Broca's area, area number 44 and 45, which plays a role in word production. Wernicke's area, area number 22, plays a role in word comprehension. Whereas both of these areas are connected by a bunch of fibers called as arcuate fasciculus or arcuate fibers. These arcuate fibers predominantly play a role in word repetition. Just to understand whether you have got the concept, can you try to recall what does the blue line, green line and the red line identify? Which of the areas and what do they do? I hope you got the things correctly. Let's move on to talk about some lesions and associated aphasias. One of the important aphasias is Broca's aphasia, also called as cortical motor aphasia or expressive aphasia. It's important to remember word production is affected in them, repetition is affected in them, writing is affected in them, which basically leads to a non-fluent speech. Whereas they can definitely understand the instructions given because the comprehension is not affected. Typically speaking, a Broca's aphasia patient might be doing something like this. If you ask the patient, what is your name? My name is Sunil. This is possibly a gross description of Broca's aphasia as an example. It's important to remember small differences between various aphasias, especially when we are answering multiple choice questions. The important difference between transcortical motor aphasia and Broca's aphasia is to see whether repetition is affected or not. Broca's aphasia, typically repetition is affected, whereas in transcortical it is not affected. Writing is affected in Broca's aphasia, whereas in pure motor dumbness, writing is not affected. Broca's aphasia, you typically see non-fluent speech, whereas in Wernicke's aphasia, you see fluent speech. The person is stressed extremely in Broca's aphasia, whereas in Wernicke's aphasia, you might see them not to be that much stressed. Talking about Wernicke's aphasia, it's also called as cortical sensory aphasia or receptive aphasia. Comprehension is very much affected in Wernicke's aphasia. Repetition is affected. Word production is typically not affected in them. Writing and reading is affected in them. Basically, these patients have a fluent speech. It's an effortless, paraphasic speech with grammatical errors. They might be using words in a jumbled up manner. Sometimes this might make the clinician to think of a psychotic episode. So you need to be careful when you are seeing Wernicke's aphasia patients. The person is typically not stressed as already mentioned because he is not aware of the difficulties he is facing. The crucial differences which helps you to answer some of these MCQs are in transcortical sensory aphasia, repetition is not affected, whereas in Wernicke's aphasia, repetition is affected. Writing, reading is affected in Wernicke's aphasia, whereas in pure sensory dumbness, it is not affected. The other two points, we have already discussed about it. Conduction aphasia is also called as central dysphasia or syntactical dysphasia. Herein, repetition is affected. Word production and comprehension is not affected. 